guys good evening I was going to touch up on the last video that I made uh, <clears throat> I was doing a screen recording there and you only get a uh, 30 minutes to record that so uh, I felt that I need to uh, get on here and address a few things uh, when you get when you go in there and uh, you plant all those food plots and you're doing uh, land management uh, you spend that type of money for yourself to hunt an area don't always uh, run out there on opening day of season and, and uh, start hunting uh, buck bedding areas. <clears throat> you set all those food plots up to uh, hunt the, the doe when they are uh, in their feeding areas. And if they're in their feeding areas and you're hunting uh, a food plot, and they're in heat, you're going to have a really good chance to kill, a, you know, a really nice buck anyway. So if you go barreling through the woods and uh, trying to get within 100 yards of this buck that you got on your property and have embedded and all that money you just spent is gone. So uh, that's a few things you need to know before you go uh, <clears throat> jumping off and uh, like you got 200 acres you can hunt and you got certain doe bedding areas. When I, when I was talking about the doe bedding areas in the video, uh, what I was meaning is get out and check those and you can find the sign that supports that your buck is still in the area. Uh, you can hunt those bedding areas too if you hunt downwind from them. Don't get upwind from the doe bedding area and let your scent blow through and then push the does out. Not only will it do that, if any buck comes through there, he's going to smell you as well. <clears throat> but remember now when you hunt these dope bedding areas the buck he's going to travel the downwind, downwind side and you got your prevailing winds for whatever month that you're in the wind's always going to be a different you know prevail differently so uh, in the month of September the prevailing winds for here is something you know it's going to be out of the south southwest southeast something like that you know and then as we get on into the winter, it's going to switch, you know, to a northwest wind, which is common all around America. And every once in a while, you get that rare east wind that uh, lets you get in and hunt a few spots that you can't hunt uh, with the other winds. So uh, just stay downwind of all the bedding areas always. I don't care if it's a buck or a doe. Don't ever uh, let your wind drift over, uh, especially your buck bedding area. You can... Once you booger him, you may not see him till the following season, and uh, he'll just totally abandon his bed. I mean, you don't want to spend the type of money that we're talking about to have a lease or a farm and then set up all these food plots. And here you are. You've set the stage for this deer. All you got to do is just take your time. If When you're hunting a specific animal, do not be too aggressive. Because if he's already coming and eating in your food plots and he's already breeding your does and he likes you know the land that uh you have set forth you know for him now if you're hunting public land and you only got a couple days and you don't have this big farm <clears throat> or a big lease you know uh hey don't think i won't set up in a bedding area i mean i'll get in there as close as i can to him then but I think it's, a lot of this stuff is misleading people. Uh, people need a category, you know, put it in a category of what you're talking about. Yes, we understand, you know, I understand anyway, you, you can get within 100 yards of a buck and you can set up on this deer and possibly, you know, take him. But when you just spent, mm, these guys out there that drop big money, I'm talking $20,000, $25,000 a season. And if you don't know any better, there you go. You're going to go, you know, track your, your land. You're going to run off in there and try to set up 100 yards on this Boone and Crockett deer that, you know, you've watched all summer. You've watched him grow. And uh, you're going to run him off. If you don't succeed, that you you have just ran him off. So when he does come up out of that bedding area and you're not there and he smells where you've been, he won't bed there again. Bet you that, bud. 
And if he does bed there again, then he very, very unpressured deer, and uh, you're very lucky. So uh, be careful where you go. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, not. I'm telling you the deer will uh, accept you more in a feeding area. But I wouldn't go off in those bedding areas unless it was last resort, like the last weekend of hunting season. Then I would probably hunt. If I'm, I'm talking about micromanaged QDMA lands, don't touch that bedding area until the end of you know the deer season. So once you do, that deer's gone. I mean, you know, there's a thing on there. Everybody's seeing it on YouTube now. You know, if you know where that deer's uh, sleeping and you know where he's eating, then he should be dead. Well, no, not necessarily. You know, you may not have that opportunity to have a, you know, where you can hunt every day. So, uh, and if, you know, you spent this buttload of money that we're talking about and you go in there and you use that term that you just heard on the, the YouTube channel over here somewhere and, uh, oh, I know where he's sleeping. I know where he's bedding and that deer should be dead. <sighs> If you know where he's eating, there's a better chance of taking that buck on a land that, like I'm talking about, a farm, a managed place, somewhere where somebody's putting in a lot of work. You don't want to go out there planting trees and planting food plots and uh, putting out feeders, setting all this stuff up to kill this buck, spend that kind of money, and to buy, or maybe you're a landowner. You don't want to set all this up to push the deer three miles over there to another property for someone else to kill him. So, uh, watch where you hunt these bucks at. The best place to hunt these bucks is going to be in the feeding areas. That's why I, sh I was showing you the feeding areas of, like, where the deer was at in the summer. You know, his that won't always, he's not always going to return to that. He may come back late season and feed in that area again, but he's not going to come back, you know, during the rut if there's no does there. He's going to go and feed where the does eat. If a doe's eating in a certain food plot over here, he'll be over there, buddy, and he'll be with them. Now, he ain't going to be no other bucks. If anything else comes in there, he'll run them off. He'll, he'll scurry that field or that uh, whatever you have planted for him. And uh, you got to set certain stands up then. When you got these food plots, you need one set up for your most dominant wind and then your off wind. And only... Go in this feeding area. Don't go in the woods. Stay out of there. Uh, unless it's a big block of timber and you know he's not bedding in there and you know there's not a doe bedding area there. Then you can go in that timber. But you got to know where these bedding areas are. you got to know. And when you, once you know, it's like playing with dice then, baby. You just got to know when to roll them things. And when you got your camera set up on your feeding areas like I'm talking about, then you're going to know which one he's hitting. Regardless if it's a card camera, if that's all you can afford. I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money to have a food plot. You could do this, you know, on a few acres of land and still walk away successful with a very, very big buck. You you only got 20 acres of land. Hey, man, you could put in uh, some small food plots. And if you know where to put them, if you absolutely know, I mean, you got to know where to put those things and... Uh, you can take uh, Granddaddy Long Legs when he comes strolling through there. I promise you that. So don't let what you see on uh, some of these channels. The guys are not wrong. I'm not saying they're wrong at all because I've killed a lot of deer doing what they're talking about. But that's for, you know, more of a public land thing. If you're going to go out and be a public land hunter, and uh, I'll tell you, some of the public land is, is going to be a little almost easier than what I'm talking about because you're not going to have to spend the kind of money I'm talking about to kill this deer. And uh, <clears throat> some people take satisfaction in the hunting public land and taking these deer and taking them out and uh, being the one that actually gets the buck and stuff, and that's awesome. Man. It's a good feeling. I've, I've done it before, and uh, I hunt a lot of public land, like 80-20. That's, that's the way it is. I got a little bit here and a little bit over there private, and uh, – the rest of it is public. But uh, what I'm talking about by hunting feeding areas, you can do this anywhere. 
You don't have to be the guy that goes in there and throws it all at the, at the bedding area. But what the guys on public land are doing, they're just pushing that deer around and around and around and around. I mean, if you're in hill country, it ain't going to work that well for you. If you're off in somewhere like uh, a swamp where that deer's got water around him and there's nowhere for him to go, man, you better believe I won't fall off in there. There's something wrong with you. You don't think I will. I will get in there where he's at and kill him. I'll, I mean, I'll lay there with a knife and take him. You know, I'll, I will get that deer. I promise you. And uh, if he's one I want, I will get him. And you can too. So uh, think about what you're doing before you do it. If you're hunting these hill country deer and these ridges, don't go in there and booger him up. Stay off of him. Stay downwind from where he's going to be. If you hunt him in the evening, hunt crosswind. If you hunt him in the morning, you hunt downwind. Take advantage of your thermals. You got your thermals rising up your hills in the mornings and they fall back down in the evenings. You got to know these sort of things when you want to kill a big buck. Because that's what he's following. That's what he's doing. The only other time, if you don't want to pay attention to all that, then you hunt feeding areas. You still got to know the wind. Take the wind in effect every time you step foot in the woods. When you pull up in your pickup truck before you go in the woods, get your wind puffer out, your milkweed, whatever it is you, you use, and you know, you see which direction it's going to go before you even go in the woods. And when you head into those woods, if it's in the evening, you're going to a feeding area, approach for crosswind. Set your stands up to where you can hunt this crosswind. That you're, you're going into. Because when a buck or a doe, they're, they're going to approach a feeding area from downwind. And if you're sitting downwind in the evening, guess what? You just got busted. So you got to know what a crosswind is. A crosswind is when the wind, you know, hits you inside of your face. And uh, if I'm heading north and I have a northwest wind, it's going to be like this. So I'm going to have to turn a little bit to go set up on these deer. I mean, you got to know, like, Wind at cheek is crosswind. Wind at face is downwind. And if it's smacking you in the back of the head, you're upwind. So study this. There's a lot of videos out there, guys. It's not just the videos I'm making. I can show you what the winds are. Me telling you is one thing. You got to know. When you get off in these woods, you got to know. You can't just, you know, throw it all at it if you spent that type of money. You go out and you go buy you a, a tree stand that's uh, portable and uh, or a portable ground blind and you've bought, oh man, $1,000 worth of hunting clothes and you've planted four or five good food plots that cost you over a thousand bucks, you know, a piece. And then you've got these deer coming in and you're going to go in there and hunt them uh, the baiting style, the way that other folks do. You, you're going to screw that property up That's what you're going to do. And the people that, you know, don't screw up the properties is going to kill the big deer. And they're going to be the ones on the showing off their big bucks and stuff like that. Uh, and you, you know, you got to set up things the way that it's going to take these deer. You, you can't let a deer get by or not <clears throat> ever, you know, being shot at or, uh, I mean, you just can't let him live freely. If he's a big buck, I mean, eventually you're going to have to move in and try to take him. And, and if you do do that, do it in the, the towards the end of the season when you know you're, you know, hey man, I ain't got nothing to lose. Let me go off and try to bust that bed. Let me, you know, let me get down in here and try to, you know, tear him up somehow. Let me, I'll get him when he comes out of there somewhere. Uh, but your doe feeding areas is going to be uh, acorn flats. That'd be a good spot to start uh, early season, early rut. When, where you have your acorns, get off in there and uh, you can hunt those, you know, acorn flats. And uh, they can be on a, a mountain or a side hill of a ridge or down in a river bottom. Hey, man, it don't matter. You got acorns, you're going to have does. So you get in there where the acorns at. Uh, you know, in November, that's when, you know, the first raise of this raise, first phase of this rut uh, actually starts. And, uh, I know there's a lot of things going around about do not hunt mornings anymore. Well, uh, hey, you're not hunting mornings. You're really cutting your legs off. So get out there and hunt them. the morning hunts. You know, 
need to be out there in the mornings. There's a good feeding period going, you know, time right there between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. You know, we've got does on their feet eating. All right, you, you're just going to let that go? Just because you want to go over here and hunt a, a deer in its bed? Hmm. No. So, uh, between 3 and 10, you know, a.m. in the mornings, it's going to be a feeding period. And if you're not there, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that. And you should take advantage of all the feeding times that, that there is. Don't worry about the deer seeing you or smelling you in these feeding areas the way you do that bedding area. They know they're getting hunted. They're not stupid. But they're going to let you buy with it in this feeding area because they're hungry. That's the reason why. Or they may start coming in at nighttime when they do move to a different area. When you get deer starting to be nocturnal, go somewhere else. Let that place rest for a little while. They'll come back. But if you get off in there stomping this bedding area out, not knowing what you're doing, you, you have just ran him off. And you spent all the time, all the hard work, all that summer sweat, and all that money and all them cameras you just ran, and them cell cameras these days, those things are not cheap. And here you are paying the bills on them also, and you got your wife madder than a fire ant, and you go out there and, you know, set up, try to set up 150, 200 yards from this deer, and not using the resources that you spent in planting? Come on, man. When, the only time I would ever, like I said, would be an end of the season. If I didn't have, you know, nothing else to lose, I know, hey, if I push him out of here, it's going to be okay because it's the end of the season. It still ain't okay because he could go over there and get shot, which he, he may do that anyway if he follows the doe out of there. But if you if it's because of you, it's going to make you feel really bad. So, uh, hunt morning hunts, hunt those feeding areas. Hunt the evening hunts, hunt those feeding areas. Approach the feeding areas from different air, you know, different winds. Like if you're going to hunt in the morning, you're going to a nice oak flat. Approach, approach that oak flat from downwind. Set up from downwind. I don't care if you're on the ground. I kill a lot of deer, a lot of my deer from the ground. Eighty percent of them from the ground. More, you know. Uh, you don't have to be in a tree to kill a deer. A lot of people think I got to get in a tree. No, you don't. I've drove my drove my bow sitting on the ground. I've, I've shot plenty of them. Uh, on the ground. I just don't get it. I don't get why people are doing what they're doing. And man, when I went out opening day with my daughter and I saw these, uh, we walked a long way back there to get to this one feeding area and we were set up on it and uh, we had a, a doe come in and I could have took her, but I didn't. I had a bow. <clears throat> we were sitting on the ground. And this deer went in front of us. It was probably ah, 30 minutes after daylight. I let her go. and uh, I was going to see if, you know, there was just any bucks at all feeding in that feeding area. And I think we seen three three deer that morning. They was all does. Or maybe one was a spike. I can't remember. But we was on public. Well, we left. I was hunting the feeding area. And we left. And we'd go out. Trucks parked everywhere. I'm like, where did they come from? You know, I didn't see them in the feeding area when I came back. It was the only feeding area in the area. I mean, when I came back through there, if they was anybody, I would have saw, them, you know, the Orange Army. I mean, you, you're not going to miss that. And so I came through and she was with me and I told her, like, you know, keep your eyes open. If you see any orange, let me know. I didn't want to mess anybody's hunting. If I was going to try to, you know, go around them somehow. Because, you know, when I came out. They decided they wanted to hunt all day. I didn't want to mess their hunting up. So that was one area I could have went through and avoid it all. But I was looking for orange. I didn't know if anybody was in there or not. So I mean, had I known there was somebody else in there, then I might have waited a little bit. You know, I left at like 10 or 11. We get back to my truck, and there was another truck. And then we turned around and pulled out, and there was four more trucks. I'm like, well, where were they hunting? They must not have had any orange on whatsoever if they was in the area we was in because I didn't see them. So, uh, yeah, it's gotten crazy on public land with uh, 
the new public land craze and everything, you know, I think it's a good thing. I, I really enjoy the, the public land uh, hunting. Uh, you know, the guys, uh, the hunting public, they've done a good job at uh, showing you how uh, to get out and take these deer and stuff. Uh, done an excellent job. So, uh, remember in the evening, around mm, about 4 o'clock, from 4 to 10 p.m., there's going to be another feeding area, or feeding time, I mean. So, uh, you need to be in the woods between 3 a.m., 10 a.m., and then uh, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., I mean, you can't hunt till 10 p.m., but that'll be the second feeding uh, of the day. So there, there you go. You know that from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m., there's going to be a feeding cycle. And then from 4 to 10 p.m., there's going to be another feeding cycle. And during the night, they'll, you know, get up, move around, and eat, too. So they are up eating a lot more than what you think. A lot of people think, that old dude, man, he just left my stinking food plot and he went down there and bedded and that gum, he's laid there and he's going to lay there all day. And when he does stand up, he's going to start eating acres and he's going to be back here at 3 a.m. That's, that's why I call it hunting, brother. Everybody has to deal with that. But don't go run him off. Don't be, don't, don't do nothing stupid like that. That's, that's not a good idea. If you're hunting a piece of public land and you want to dive off in the evening time, get close to a bed as possible. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you spend this money, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll say, hey, I ain't doing that. Forget that. That, you know, I spent all my money and I ain't got no big bucks. You ran them off, bud, trying to be somebody you're not. Guys, just be yourself when it comes to this. Uh, there's no certain person you, you have to watch. Or have to try to learn from a lot of guys out there now are new hunters and they don't understand uh, what they are doing so uh, when they uh, get out there the last thing you need to do is, is mislead them they should be like listen this is for advanced skilled hunters only or this is for if you're a newbie watch this video you know I but, I mean, the whole point of this is to teach somebody, you know, what what not to do when you spend that kind of money. Now, if you're going to be just a public land guy only, watch the public land hunting. Watch, you know, uh, the shows that's out there that guys hunt public land and betty bucks and stuff like that all the time. Uh, I'm not taking any shots. Those guys are 100% correct. All of them are. I would never take a shot. But I'm telling you, you don't do what they do on your micromanaged land. You're going to wish you hadn't. Because they put they only got a few days to kill the deer when they do pull up in one of these states. When somebody pulls up and they're in uh, Iowa, I got four days to get it done. Well, you are, yeah, you're going to go hunt beds. That's, that's the smartest thing to do. You wouldn't want to sit on a cornfield with everybody trolling across it this is public land you got to get to the beds so watch out what you do it's, it's a big caution for you guys that are you're not those guys that's on tv those are still very very they're very skilled hunters and not only that they're in iowa they're in kansas apple noise um all across the north i mean there's some good deer hunting up there already and then you fall in and start hunting beds you know, the way that, that it's set up for them, they have to hunt them that way. That's that's a, you only got a few days, you got to do it that way. And then they're off to another state, and they're very successful at it. Don't do this on your micromanaged land. It ain't going to work. If you got a little micro area that's 10 acres, you ain't going to do any count. You're going to not do any good at it. Unless you get real lucky when you fall off there at first time in the bedding area, you better make sure because you're going to get one shot. And that one shot, after that, when he's gone, that's it. Another thing, you'll be watching guys doing recordings the way I'm doing this recording right now, and you'll see them cut out a bunch of stuff. You'll see a bunch of stops and edits and 
little glitches and you know you're gonna see that with me because once i tell you something i'm gonna tell you why you know from my heart you know i'm not gonna stop edit out something that i said oh no i should have said that mm -mm. i'm just telling you it's called public land hunting for a reason read it read it before you you go do this on your lease or before you go where you've planted all these food plots you don't want to do that you need to watch somebody else i don't know who but <clears throat> you can still watch them and use their strategies on your public land hunting and watch you know whoever try to do strategies on your micro land or your uh, big lease that you have uh, you know another thing uh here in alabama they you know recently uh, let us start baiting deer uh, the last three or four years uh we got a lot of nocturnal deer now because these deer uh, bed off the corn feeders and stuff now, and they, they know that they come there at night. They don't have no uh, consequences at nighttime unless somebody's being a legal hunter. <coughs> but uh, think before you do something, especially if you're putting out feed and stuff like that too. Uh, sometimes a food plot could be better. Uh, especially one that stays green. I have good luck. Clover, uh, have good luck with uh, ryegrass. You're always going to have good luck planting it because it'll, it'll stay green most of the year. But I like clover and oats. Uh, there was one more I was going to mention that we did a blend with. Uh, it was clover, oats, and uh, peas. Peas, clover, and oats. We done a blend with that. Oh my goodness, man! We wore them out that year. Uh, we had all, all it was people baiting all around us. So uh, I, I have done small food plots about I don't know a quarter acre, and if you put it in the right place, buddy, you, you got you a good spot. And if you stay out of there and just just let the deer. Figure them out. Pattern them first. Use those cameras that y'all are spending so much money for. You don't have to have a camera. But if you're spending that kind of money, use that thing. Use it the way you're supposed to use it. And I and watch, you know, like I said, watch your bedding areas. You don't need to get in there and uh, absolutely hammer and destroy your bedding areas if you're going to pay that kind of money. I just don't understand why guys are going to do that. I see them doing it, too. I'm like, whoo. Buddy, you just ran off a 170-inch deer that you spent a truckload of money on these food plots, a truckload of money on these feeders, a truckload of money on these cameras, a truckload of money leasing this land, and you just ran all your deer off trying to be somebody that you're not. You're not going to be those people you see on TV if you're hunting this. You have to hunt this this way or this is not going to work. And do I think I'm correct? Absolutely. 100% correct. If you're going to set this up, hunt, hunt those food plots. Hunt those feeding areas. Hunt those feeders. Don't hunt their bed. Leave that alone. So they don't leave your property. So, that's just the way it is. That's the way it's going to, you know, I'm going to keep telling people don't do that that way on these lands that you have managed. Because, I mean, you can't. It's not, not, it's not going to work. It may work one out of 20 times or one out of 50 times. Do you want to spend 50 sets it's not seeing any deer? Or do you, would you like to see some deer? I mean, think about it, guys. Think about what you're doing before you do it, and you'll be more successful. You go out on this public land adventure, you want to do one? Hunt those bedding areas. Those guys are 100% correct. Everybody is talking about the new bed sneaking in on them and stuff, uh, hunting in, in the evenings. You know, they're they're correct. 100%. 100%. And uh, i done a scent control video a few few weeks back, uh, maybe a month or two ago. Check that out if you want to know something about scent control. I've done hill country videos. I've done... Uh, Stuff where you can go and set up on beds. I, I've talked about this uh, 
hunting beds and stuff like that, you know, the way that I would approach hunting a bed is different than what way some other folks do. And, uh, you know, it's fine. If we was all the same, it wouldn't be any fun. We wouldn't be able to have this conversation. But just know your place and know your spot in the pecking order before you go and do something and, and screw up the property. <clears throat> There's guys that can, that are really good deer hunters out there. And, uh, you know, they're successfully taking big bucks every season, doing what I just talked about, letting those deer have that. you got to give them something. You, and if you're doing what we're talking about, if you're managing property, you got to give them the beds. You have no choice. There you go, bud. There's your bed. You enjoy that over there. I'm not going to mess with that. When you come through here following this doe, you know, I've planted these food plots for my does. When uh, you come through here, you know, to, to eat with these does, then you've had a bad day. I will get you. And he will, he'll, when he hits that food plot, buddy, you better believe if he's following a doe, he's coming in from downwind. He may come out 30 minutes after those. He'll stand in the woods a lot of times and watch them out there. Because he knows the moment he steps out there that there's an opportunity that he may, you know, be shot. So... A lot of times he'll come out 30 minutes behind them to leave those does out there. You know, if you're going to harvest does, take them late season. You don't want to take them in a peak of the rut. That's or a peak of breeding. Take you some early season. Take you some late season. But uh, if your hunting season opens a month early and you get a month of hunting in before the rut, get in there and take you a few does. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't do it in the same spot every time. You don't go in this food plot, take a couple of does. Go over here in this feeding area, take a couple of does. If you can't afford food plots, don't plant them. Don't mean you can't have feeders. If you can't afford feeders, don't have them. There's still going to be feeding areas on your property, regardless if you put any there or not. And in your neighbor's properties, what they do is going to have an impact on your land also. So if your neighbors have food plots and you don't, Create some bedding if you can't afford them. You can afford a chainsaw or a hundred bucks. Go down there and cut down some trees and uh, make you a good little bedding area. Certain places to put them. You know, I can tell you where to put them. I can show you where to put them. I can tell you how to hunt them. But uh, there's a lot of things you can do, guys. Don't ever think, you know, man, this place is just it's horrible. It just sucks. I don't have any deer bedding. I don't have any deer eating here. Uh, I don't have any money to do anything with. Or, Hey, man, we all feel you. That's why you see guys out hunting public. They, they can't afford to do what we're talking about. I can't afford to do it. I mean, I am I live in a trailer on a few acres of land. I mean, nothing special here, bud. I'm just here to talk to you guys about deer hunting. And I, I want to see people be more successful. And I want to see people use their time and their money in the right place. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. And uh, when you start to do this and you're successful, you'll see. whatever You're going to have different passions. Some people have passions in planting trees and food plots and being that guy that does that. Some people can't stand those guys because some of them are really arrogant. Right? You know, some of them are weird. But it's okay. They're out there doing the same thing you're doing. You don't have to be a never going to get everybody on an even playing field because nobody's going to agree with one another. But we can all agree on something. We're there for the same thing, and that's to harvest the deer. You got guys that are totally in on scent control. You got guys that don't believe in it. You got guys that want to hunt Betty Bus, and you got guys like me that think, you know, it's according to where I'm at before I hunt that Betty Buck. I'm going to hunt that bedded buck on my property that I spent all this money for until later in the season I'll go after him but I'm not going to do it so this is what this video is about is that property you guys just seen in part one of the whitetail rut right there that's for the southern rut this is going to be for everywhere not just the south this video is about every stinking state I've ever been to you can't just you know 
you're up north and you can't afford plant food plots, got a farmer around, ask him to leave you some standing corn. That's some of the best stuff on earth. I've seen those deer go in that standing corn and just rip the corn off the, the stalk and carry the ear of the corn back in the woods and stand over and eat it. And they'll just walk in and out of the woods doing this. And if you'll see all kinds of critters doing it. And if you walk the backside of these cornfields, you'll find corn cobs that strolled up in the woods. I might. So, uh, standing corn is, oh man, it's a big draw, especially up north, down south. If you can find a guy to leave you some standing corn, get him to do it. Just say, hey, will you care to miss a couple swaps right here? Especially if you're the owner. A lot, a lot of our public lands right now, they're, they're leaving standing beans and standing corn. And uh, I appreciate that. You know, I'm glad our state's doing a little bit better of a job. But a long time ago, they would have did that. They're like, no, I'll go ahead and take that corn out. <laughs> but uh, our population uh, for turkeys is going up here in Alabama. Our deer population is going up dramatically. So uh, we've like at 25 deer per square mile between uh, – I think it's 19 and 25 per square mile. That's a lot of deer. Anyway, guys, I love each and every one of you. Like and subscribe. Thanks and God bless. Uh, I could ramble on for hours. That's the kind of person I love to ramble and talk and uh, give you my opinion on things. And uh, remember, comment. Leave some comments down there. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll talk about anything you guys want to talk about. Uh, you can go over. We have a uh, social media group on Facebook called Backwoods Mafia Inc. You just type that in. You can join our group, and you'll see a lot of so good conversations. Uh, check us out. Uh, I think we're one of the best groups on Facebook. One of the cleanest ones anywhere. Our quality is up there. I don't allow any type of... Uh, there's no uh, bashing in that group or anybody making fun of one another. We do take some funny shots at each other every once in a while but there's if you don't want to see all that cussing and all that stuff going on come to our group because i ain't the only uh admin sitting there you know i think i got 30 something admins and every one of them i watch you know who's doing what and i mean i'm sitting there watching it all the time and i can promise you you have a good experience ain't nobody gonna pick on you over there you come over there and ain't no bullying or nothing like that because those guys get deleted instantly I've hand selected everybody that's in that group. That group is a private group. Uh, and we got 1,400 members. But you're going to look at these other groups. Yeah, they got 10, 15,000 members, but they're open to the public. I'm not. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing when I designed a group, I made it private. But when they're all hand selected members, it's a better experience. And you don't have to worry about guys. I mean, if you're on social media, you're going to face criticism either way. I, I could care less. Let them laugh. I don't care. Those guys want you to fail. They want you to not succeed. Uh, you know, when you put a – I see it all the time. I'm just scrolling, and all of a sudden, there's a guy with a little bug, and he's just getting – they're just laughing at him. And the people that are laughing, they ain't never killed nothing no better than him. They just think it's funny because they out there trying to do what he just did, and – they, they didn't do it either, and, you know, they're laughing at him for killing a six-pointer when, you know, in all reality, they would have shot him too. They might not have posted it. But, yeah, if, you, if you're if you part of groups that's doing that, scared to post, I see it now all the time. Hey, guys, I don't, I'm don't i being serious. They'll type that before they put in, you know, what they're going to say. If you're scared to post something, you're in the wrong place posting. So. Come over to Backwoods Mafia, and uh, we are a social media group. This here is the Backwoods Inc. This is uh, different. This is my YouTube channel. It's my personal channel. That group is for everybody. It's not just for me. It's for everyone. So uh, check us out, guys. Remember, like and subscribe. See ya. This has been a Backwoods Studio production. If you would, please like and subscribe. Or come over to Facebook and follow us, Backwoods Mafia Inc.